have been invited to contribute to a video for our recent article entitled Quantitative Ultrasound and Ultrasound-Based Elastography for Chronic Liver Disease, Practical Guidance, from the AGR Special Series on Quantitative Imaging. This is a collaborative review article between authors based in Montreal, Canada, Paris, France, and London, UK. Hi, I'm Ann Tang. I'm an abdominal radiologist, clinical scientist, and professor of radiology at the University of Montreal. Hi, my name is Lik Senzai. I'm a radiology resident at the University of Montreal. Chronic liver disease is characterized by long-term damage and inflammation to the liver, leading to fibrosis, cirrhosis, and increased risk of hepatic cellular carcinoma. Main etiologies include metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, alcohol-induced liver disease, and viral hepatitis. As treating the underlying cause of chronic liver disease could reverse the process of fibrosis, an imaging technique that can be used for both diagnosis and treatment monitoring is highly needed. Liver biopsy for histological assessment is invasive and limited by sampling variability, high intrareader variability, and the coexistence of multiple grading systems, making it imprecise and challenging for longitudinal monitoring. MRI PDFF is now recommended as the reference standard for liver fat quantification. However, it is limited by high costs, low availability, and patient contraindications. Conventional beam mode ultrasound is widely used by radiologists for liver assessment, yet it provides primarily qualitative information, such as the visual assessment of increased echogenicity relative to the kidney for detecting steatosis. So this context highlights the necessity for quantitative imaging techniques to enhance diagnostic accuracy. Quantitative ultrasound, or QUS, and ultrasound-based elastography have been proposed for the assessment of liver steatosis, inflammation, and fibrosis in the setting of chronic liver disease. Coupled with conventional BMOT ultrasound, they can provide a multi-parametric assessment of liver morphology, evaluation for signs of portal hypertension, and quantitative assessment, all within a single examination. In this article, the severity of steatosis, inflammation, and fibrosis is based on reference standards that either include histological assessment or MRI. The grading definitions are presented on this slide. This diagram presents an overview of the QUS, uh, shear wave elastography, and other advanced ultrasound techniques covered in this review. QUS methods provide information on tissue microstructure through analysis of its acoustic properties. Elastography methods provide information on mechanical properties of tissues. Contra-enhanced ultrasound allows for evaluation of vascular supply to tissues. Quantitative ultrasound techniques include attenuation, backscatter, speed of sound, or a combination of the previous techniques. Attenuation refers to the decay in amplitude with depth as the ultrasound wave propagates through a tissue at a certain frequency. It is mainly determined by absorption and scattering. The main application for quantification of liver attenuation is to provide a measurement of liver fat content. Here is a list of the main commercially available techniques for liver fat quantification organized by techniques and corresponding manufacturers. In this example, attenuation measurement is shown in a 67-year-old man with type 2 diabetes. On the left, we have a B-mode image, and on the right, the corresponding color map with a superimposed region of interest. Attenuation measurement was 0.79 decibel per centimeter per megahertz, consistent with moderate liver steatosis, or S2. This diagnosis was confirmed by MRI PDFF, indicating 19%, and also histopathological assessment showing macrovesicular steatosis involving 40% of hepatocytes. A standardized protocol is mandatory to ensure reliable attenuation coefficient measurements and reduce variability. The probe should be placed in a right intercostal space during neutral apnea for accurate acquisition. The region of interest must be positioned 2 cm below the liver capsule, and a measurement box size of 3 cm is recommended for all manufacturers. The attenuation coefficient has shown good 
to very good diagnostic performance for grading of liver steatosis. However, studies vary in methodologies, populations, and reference standards. A meta-analysis of 13 studies has reported a pooled sensitivity and specificity for diagnosing S1 to S3 of 76% and 84% respectively, and for S2 or higher of 87% and 79% respectively. For comparison, B-mode ultrasound has high specificity but relatively low sensitivity for the detection of abetic steatosis, especially for mouth disease. Few direct comparisons between attenuation coefficient and controlled attenuation parameter has shown um, that a attenuation coefficient performs similarly or better for grading steatosis when using MRI PDFF as the reference standard. Backscatter refers to the acoustic signal returning to the transducer due to reflection and scattering. At a microscopic scale, constructive and destructive wave interferences produced by tissue microstructure modulate the magnitude of return echoes. Diverse backscatter approaches exist, but the most common method is the measure of backscatter coefficient, or BSC, in units of centimeter per steridian. The quantification of liver backscatter has been explored for the measurement of liver fat content. Calibration with a reference phantom is necessary to compensate for ultrasound system settings and beam characteristics. Investigative backscatter without the need for calibration on a reference phantom has been explored by some manufacturers. Commercial implementations of backscatter statistics methods have been recently made available uh, via tissue scatter distribution imaging and normalized local variance. A few studies reported good to very good diagnostic performance of the backscatter coefficient for detecting or predicting different grades of hepatic steatosis using MRI PDFF or histopathology as reference standard. You can refer to Table 1 in our article. The speed of sound refers to how fast ultrasound waves propagate through a tissue depending on tissue composition. Ultrasound waves travel faster in less compressible tissue and correlate inversely with tissue density. Most ultrasound systems assume a single constant speed of sound of 1,540 meters per second. Tissue variations in speed of sound can manifest as image degradation, but in QUS, they can be used to infer tissue mechanical properties. Because SOS is lower in fatty liver, SOS estimation has been explored for the quantification of hepatic steatosis. One commercially available technique is shown here. Plain wave ultrasound attenuation and speed of sound measurements are shown in a 57-year-old woman with metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, or MASLD. A region of interest superimposed on a B-mode image yields an attenuation of 0.52 decibel per centimeter per megahertz, which is higher than that of the normal liver image with the same system, and a speed of sound of 1506 meters per second, which is lower than that of the normal liver. Two studies reported good to very good diagnostic performance for estimation of speed of sound for detecting liver steatosis. There are some limitations to this technique, as it shows a narrow range from no steatosis to severe steatosis and therefore, a precise measurement is required. As individual quantitative parameters may be affected by confounders, the combination of different techniques may correct for sources of variability and improve correlation with liver fat content. Two combined techniques based on attenuation and backscatter have been developed, both expressed as a percentage fat estimate. The ultrasound-derived fat fraction or UDFF, and the ultrasound fat fraction, or USFF. A few studies showed good to very good diagnostic performance of these techniques in identifying steatosis. Ultrasound-based elastography techniques include shear wave speed, shear wave dispersion, and shear wave attenuation. Shear waves are transverse waves that consist of alternating shearing motion of tissue propagating in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the source wave. Shear wave speed measures the velocity of shear wave propagation. 
It is used to assess liver stiffness. Shear wave speed is increased in liver fibrosis, as we see in B, compared to normal liver in A. Shear wave elastography is well established in liver stiffness assessment. Its use is recommended for the non-invasive staging of liver fibrosis in patients with compensated advanced chronic liver disease for risk stratification of liver-related complications and for prediction of the presence of clinically significant portal hypertension. Shear wave speed estimation can be achieved through VCTE, point shear wave elastography, and 2D shear wave elastography. The two latter techniques are based on acoustic radiation force impulse, or RFE, a special ultrasound push, a pulse that applies focus compression, inducing shear wave propagation perpendicular to the pulse. Shear wave speed can be expressed in meters per second, which is a unit of speed, or in kilopascal, a unit of elasticity. Standardized protocol should be followed regardless of manufacturer to ensure diagnostic accuracy and reproducibility. Here we summarize the guidance regarding patient preparation, measurement method, and reporting. On this slide, we list the three shear wave speed techniques, vibration controlled transient elastography or VCTE, point shear wave, and 2D shear wave elastography along with the names of commercial implementations and the corresponding manufacturers. For interpretation, the 2020 Society of Radiologists and Ultrasound Panel recommended a rule of four for the interpretation of liver stiffness measurements using RFE-based techniques, regardless of the manufacturer. So th these represent quantitatively determined tiers of elasticity measurements by increments of four kilopascals, indicative of disease state. Similarly, for VCTE, the Vivino 6 and 7 consensus proposed a rule of 5 to assess the severity of liver stiffness. Here's a representative 2D shear wave elastography measurement in a 30-year-old woman with Wilson's disease and biopsy-proven stage 4 fibrosis or cirrhosis. Elasticity map is shown on the left and propagation map on the right. Repeated measurements, not shown here, with selected regions of interest provided a median shear wave speed estimation of 2 meters per second and elasticity of 12.2 kilopascals, which is increased compared with normal. Dispersion provides information on viscosity or dampening behavior of tissue. In viscoelastic tissues such as the liver, Shear wave dispersion refers to changes in shear wave speed based on frequency. Liver with inflammation has higher viscosity than normal liver and therefore shows higher shear wave dispersion as represented by orange and brown curves respectively on the graphic on the right. The frequency dispersion of shear wave speed provides information on the viscosity of a tissue. More viscous tissue demonstrate higher shear wave dispersion. For patients with mazel, shear wave dispersion assessment could potentially aid in distinguishing metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH from steatosis alone. It has also been explored for liver fibrosis or inflammatory damage in autoimmune hepatitis, as well as in allograft damage following liver transplant. Shear wave dispersion has been implemented on clinical scanners from two manufacturers. However, evidence regarding the clinical use of shear wave dispersion remains limited. In this example, shear wave elastography and shear wave dispersion slope are shown for evaluation of liver stiffness and inflammation in a 63-year-old man with type 2 diabetes. On the left, we are shown an elasticity map. In the upper right, a propagation map. On the bottom left, a grayscale image and on the bottom right, a dispersion map. Shear wave elastography showed normal value of liver stiffness of 3.4 kilopascals, but increased value of shear wave dispersion slope of 14.7 meters per second by kilohertz. Here is another example from a different manufacturer. In a 76-year-old man with no known liver disease, we can see a mean stiffness of 6.9 kilopascals on the elasticity map on top and a viscosity of 1.9 pascal second 
on the viscosity map on the bottom. Both measurements were within normal limits. Shear wave attenuation refers to the decrease in amplitude or intensity of shear waves as they propagate through tissue. Shear wave attenuation is increased in liver steatosis compared to normal liver. Fat in microvesicular and microvesicular spaces within hepatocytes presumably adds a viscous or lossy component to the liver, thereby increasing the attenuation of shear waves. Shear wave attenuation measurements for the assessment of hepatic steatosis has been explored in a few studies, although to date no shear wave attenuation technique has direct commercial availability. Here are examples of shear wave attenuation measurements in two patients. Attenuation was higher in the patient with severe steatosis on top compared with the patient with uh, no steatosis on the bottom. Contrast and vascular imaging can be performed with contrast-enhanced ultrasound, or CUS. This technique permits real-time characterization of focal liver lesions by observing lesion enhancement pattern continuously in a more dynamic fashion than by CT or MRI. It can also be used to assess portal hypertension. In this example, a 73-year-old man with hepatocellular carcinoma is seen on the background of hepatic steatosis as evaluated by CUS. On the left, the grayscale image shows focal liver lesion in segment six, which is predominantly echogenic. On the center, the arterial early phase image shows hyper enhancement of this mass, and the late portal venous phase on the right shows lesion washout. To conclude, Quantitative ultrasound and ultrasound-based elastography techniques are more accurate than B-mode imaging for detecting and quantifying liver steatosis, inflammation, and fibrosis. They are non-invasive and represent inexpensive, more available alternatives to MRI and liver biopsy. Additional techniques are inc increasingly becoming commercially available, the most validated being attenuation-based techniques and shear wave elastography measuring shear wave speed. Nonetheless, a key challenge lies in measurement standardization and the comparison between different manufacturers' proprietary techniques. Further research is necessary to identify and mitigate confounding factors and to better correlate measurements with disease severity. We thank you very much for your attention, and we refer you to the manuscript published in AGR for further details.